This is my two-year review of the InstantCon RF70. Oh my god. The RF70 is a fully manual rangefinder camera. It has shutter speeds from 1 second up to 1 500th. The aperture is adjustable from 5.6 to f22. Uh, sharpest is at f8 and f11, but the others are good for low light. The RF70 uses standard easy to find AA batteries, and rechargeable batteries work just fine. Okay, to open the cover, push the button and lift it up, and then pull the braces up. To close the camera, make sure that the lens is set back to infinity, and then push the button next to the lens, and then bring it down slowly and carefully. The light meter will flash green when the exposure is good, and red when it's not. And it'll flash green and red when you're getting close to Christmas. <laughs> take advantage of the wider apertures you have to use ND filters these ones are proprietary uh, and yes that is a crack on the ND8 don't drop it as well as battery level and exposures it'll give you the ND filter to use for ND4 ND8 which is useful a pop-up flash is provided but you can use an external flash with the correct cable focuses with the circular window under the viewfinder using this YouTube page. When the images match up, then it will be in focus. You can do multiple exposures, and then you can eject when you're finished. Over the last two years, I've taken hundreds of photos, and uh, I have to say that most of them, almost all of them are keepers. Uh, I usually use manual settings but the uh, automatic settings are, are adequate enough if you don't want to do that. Okay, so let's have a closer look at some photo samples. Okay, so as you can see that 5.6 does look quite soft, uh, so I don't really use this aperture very often. Uh, again here, I focused on the bike, but again it still looks a bit hard to separate them. Uh, but it is quite useful when you're inside, uh, you don't have to use a flash and uh, this one actually I don't mind too much. Often I use f11, it looks good to me, it looks very sharp, the background is still a little bit blurred there, so I don't mind that. And here's another one at f11, I usually do f11 quite a lot on this camera. I do use auto sometimes, but not very much. Uh, it looks quite good here. The camera suggested using the ND4 filter, and it came out quite good. Uh, again here I used uh, auto, and it gave a good exposure. Again at f11. Another good thing is the multiple exposure. You can do as many exposures as you want, and then eject the film at the end of that. And uh, the next one, you can see this is actually a triple exposure. And you've got the horizontal, the vertical, and the lanterns. Here is where they have some sideshow alley games and rights. Uh, F11 again, and you can see the depth of field still looks quite good. I use a self timer quite a lot. It's a five second timer, and here it looks, it looks quite good. I do a scale distance. This is actually 6.7. I don't use that much, but it actually turned out quite good here, so uh, it's not too bad. Another thing that looks really good with this camera is using close-up filters or diopters. Uh, you don't have to use a wide aperture. Actually using a narrow aperture works out much better because of the shallow depth of field. Uh, it's quite popular for people to use uh, close-up filters for this camera. 
Um, this is another one at f8 again the depth of field looks quite nice and the subject is quite sharp in this okay another f8 and this is inside a laundromat with low light and you can see it's quite useful which you can't do on other instax cameras it's a good looking camera nodding to the classic cameras of the past it's a plastic camera considering the hefty dollars it costs but it's very light you feel like you have to take extra care with the mechanisms and the bellows but it does have a five-year warranty and mint has excellent customer service the lens is a little disappointing wide open but stopping down i'm happy with the sharpness <laughs> Hello.